I hope there's people watching this, listening to this, that like it's going to be put off by. You're going to get hurt, mate. You know, if if you're not sticking up for yourself, you're going to get hurt. I've seen in prisons. I've been a cleaner in the prison when I've seen them having sex and it's not having sex. Big old Billy over there is doing her, you know, and it's a boy. It's about two men. I'm just saying that you will, you will have things happen to you if you're listening to this and you're straight and you're a bit influenced by the books because I was influenced by the books. We had Crater, and I'm not putting anybody down, but that story of the gangster life, it was just all a lie. I remember reading the books and being, like, interested and a yearning for, oh, like, you know, something should happen here and being by these characters. And there's always a glamour around it. You know, it's, 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 not, uh, it's not real, you know. And the Richardsons and the Cray Twins and the Nashes and Freddie Form. I love Freddie Form and I know Freddie. Um, he's, he's a nice old boy uh, out of the old school. He was the one that would do all the, the, the most, the, the, the most robberies. With, like, he, he was always involved with it. That that was a story. So if you ever like people like the way the way they talk about somebody at robbers in America, he was someone that. How did you know Freddie? Uh, just in our South London, uh, and when there's the jewelry shop in Tulls Hill where we used to go in Brixton Hill, he used to sit in there with the boys. That the, if you didn't know, you wouldn't have known. But he's sitting there, and uh, and he was always a nice man, and he was. He, they had the certain principles. Them lot, they did, they did. Um, not all of them, you know, but he he had something about him. Um, and, and, he, and he brought up his children pretty well and stuff like that. So I'm aware, they're, they're like every family, there's probably issues there. I've grown up, so to speak, now. And um, but yeah, he was he was an influence and along with all them boys. So again, why I do what I do today, helping others, that's the role models we need. Someone not the gangster. We need the normal, sane, realistic, hard work ethic. People are not realizing that. The same principles, what you spoke about, that you said about, like, the same principles of drug dealing can be turned around. Like, it's like, why go along this fucking journey? Because it's getting worse out there. It's not any better. You know, it's not any better. That's why we got to do what we got to do now. This is what it is. It's about altruism. But it's about the experience. What this story is about, something happened to me, you know? It's not about the, the gangster life. Of course, it's, 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 the stories are funny. They are, and you look back, but there's always an un an underlying, you know, sadness involved for everybody. How the community is just fucked. How they leave us, really. If you're in that area, because then you got middle class and upper class, and they suffer too. Because I used to think they're all mugs as well. I did. I used to think I'll rob them. I'll I'll fucking burgle their house. I'll take their money. Fuck them. Like you know, like obviously that's not true <laughs> you know like i've since i've since them now and i'm now associating with uh, the wealthy people now sean <laughs> uh, you know i have clients i've got private jet where i've been in a few times and my clients true it's true well back then it was a terrible terrible attitude uh so the prison officers become a, a target for me now um i finish off that three month sentence with a habit i come out i turn 21 within 18 months i'm back in so I had a reign of just over, let's say a year and a half, where I, I was out. I was out for a year and a half, right? We had a flat. This is when uh, Jacinta and me, we got a flat down in Bricks and Dorset Road. And this is where my mate, it's funny, it's just coming to me. Things are coming to me. Uh, my mate who I was in Dover with, the year that I'd done my first long 18-month sentence, he actually, I saw him out my flat, 21, 22 now, and I see Paul. Right, he got out, I'd got out, a year went by, and uh, he was looking for me. He heard I lived on this road. He had a tennis ball of heroin, right? And I was only, you know, now I'm out a little while. Now I'm playing with, like, just, you know, £20 bits, £30 bits. I'm trying to hold it down, but then you don't. Then you go and earn a bit of money, right? So then I'd buy an ounce, things like that, or half ounce. So now I'm trying to manage it, because now you've got to get your thinking straight and it's not straight as we know because you're chasing your towel anyway but i would do that occasionally so if i go and get a grand i might buy an ounce of, of brown heroin uh use my crack alongside it i'd buy that and then as it's going down sometimes i just think oh fuck it and just go out again to work my my idea of a job in thieving was let's go to graft work we called it work you know, that is obviously a delusion of how we, we speak, you know, in London. Let's go to work. Yeah, what should we do? You know, let's go for like, Sal's job. Let's go, like, 
you know, over the, well, working a bar, I don't give a fuck where you work. Like, my work was going to rob, you know what I mean? That was, that's uh, how it was described. And um, so from that, you know, relatively not a lot of money, what I'm, what I'm working with, Paul comes along with 12 ounces. That's a, a jump. That's 12 times more than what I'm working with. So from an ounce, I've got 12. That's a lot. When you're doing it in 10 pound bags, you've now moved to 30, 40, 50 grand. People like telephone numbers. They say, yeah, I earned that. No, you didn't. You're a liar. You know, only a percentage of people was going out earning hundreds of grands. You know, the faces they talk, they call them the faces, like, you know, the gangsters or whatever word they use, the, who, who, are, who are, this was their job, genuinely. We was in this community of drugs and, and heroin and, and what happened, even them people in the end who were faces, they started taking the heroin. Do you understand? And they was all undercover with it. So it become, for me, this is going on everywhere. This isn't just in the ghetto. This isn't just over there. This is everywhere that, that, that's happening. And, um, and I ended up selling, obviously, drugs and then selling that. So now I'd have some more money, right? Um, I would then sit back a little bit. I would then sit back. I'd try and relax a little bit, but it don't like it didn't last. Mm. Didn't last, right? Um, the crack binge that I had, which was the one where I got a stroke from, which was when I was twenty three. Um, so it was on the back end of that money. That money then went, and then I went on a right. I was, I'll say the story. Uh, little Joey, someone I know, grew up with uh, around Brixton. Um, he he come round see me i've got five pound right we kind of would see each other and say let's do something so it's straight away to feed feed something he said what you got, what you got? i said oh, nothing fiver he said let's see if we can get a 10 pound bag off ronnie all right and uh i went oh, all right then he said i'll get it off him don't worry i'll own a fiver whatever just just to start the day so have a little smoke take the edge off so you're not withdrawing to get and get money there's nothing behind me. There's no savings account. You know, mm. there's nothing in the bank. <laughs> there's no bank account. You know, it's just out to do this. So he so he goes, he goes to see Ronnie and I wonder where he's gone. Where is the little fucker gone? Um, he lives up Streatham Hill. Bricks Hill's just, you know, here. Streatham's like 20 minutes away. I walk up to his house. I'll go around the back. He's not there. He was probably there. But he, he, I, I just fucking hell. So I just turn and thought, what can I do? Um, literally across the road because it was just instantaneous it was just naturally I've got to do something uh, I went to the, to the very first house I remember across the road I went to the very first they detached houses so you could go down the side and I looked down like that and it was a, like a computer sign and the, and the man was down there and I, I went oh sorry sorry like that and he just kind of looked at me I went two houses along as I gone down the side the doors open so it's, the doors open this is fantastic for a burglar the doors open uh, and on the table was a satchel, like that, right, it's just standing there, and I'm here, whatever, there's a distance, there's, a, there's four or five foot, I've gone up to the satchel, oh, picked it up, as I turn now, I'm facing the street, right, the door's open, as I said, bang, 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 bang. stairs, turn around, it's a 12 year old, he's Italian, I don't know why, I just went, it's police son, like that, and he just looked at me, went, mummy, mummy, robber, 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 and I run, I run, I got uh, onto the street, got onto the estate where Ronnie was, where my little mate Joey was going to get, because he sells heroin. I got onto the estate there, but just as I, I phoned him, and then, and then uh, just as I thought, oh, let me have a look in it, because in the bag, there was £15, so that's why I phoned him for a bag. I've just thought £15. But there was about 30 cards in it, and this person had at least 13, 14 pin numbers. And it was all in, in the glasses, the gla you know, so I opened up, the it was the last thing as well, so I was oh, sweating, clucking, withdrawing, I know I need this next bit, a bit of money, the tenors for £15 will get me out of trouble, but this meant I can't tell you how much I got, I know it was probably around 30 grand, 30 grand in a young person at 22, 23, back then was probably 200 grand now. So 150, something like that back then. And I lost some along the way. I was panicking because each one you get 250 out of. So like I'd, I'd have like three grand just through them 12, 13. I remember losing one because I'm panicking at Brixton Tube Station where the cash point is with all this money going up to the cash point. <laughs> Manic. And, uh, and anyway, so what happened is I phoned Ronnie up. He's got a partner. And there's a man called Lee who was there. There's four of us. I remember just turning around and saying, 
she fancies getting a few rocks. That was it, right? So now I've got this amount of money. You know, looking back, mm. I thought I was in some form of control. Mm. You're not realizing it's just horrific. Um, we smoked for eight days, right? I had a stroke. I had a stroke, right? And me and Lee had the money. We all fell out. We all fell out of each other as well. Skull gave me a clump. Something happened. All young stuff. And I felt guilty. Kid was giving snout. I got all the money. Lee's got the money. Um, it's mad. Lee was saying things. Fucking it to him. They're getting paranoid of little bits on the table. You know, and... um. And and I and this was the bit when when I had to, I was going blue apparently my mouth was going blue and I couldn't breathe down the left hand side and it's like oh fucking hell and I didn't say anything you know like no look at your face that's how I would I'll say you're right Sean like twenty two twenty three I got my fucking image to fucking uphold I can't be vulnerable right lunatic and the girl it's funny the girl the woman who's got that soft touch she went Julian are you all right it was almost like I needed that she I went no. She said, your lips are going blue. <laughs> Fucking hell. Right? I said, can I have a rest? I slept for a day. One day. Like, no lie coming out of my mouth here. One day, I remember, because like, I was shocked by the fucking the day that's gone. Eight days of smoking. What the fuck else? Didn't hardly eat. We didn't hardly eat. We bought bits and pieces along the way, obviously. Because uh, the money was, you'd go to the cash point again, one minute past 12. Do you understand? You didn't have the whole 30 grand at once. If I was, if I weren't using drugs, I would have had thirty grand and spunked two, three grand on drugs. And if I wasn't on heroin or crack, then I would have had this money. You were smoking it, you weren't fucking thinking about your next investment. Your next inv investment was who had the better crack. You know that was it. And uh, and I and I woke up, as I say, and then and, and they'd come in with a pipe. And now there was Mark Anson who said earlier he's passed away now. He come in with a pipe. He woke me up with it. And when I took it, I knew not to take it, right? Oh, he kind of give it to me. And I went, Phew. I felt from that moment on something like a twinge. Every time I took a pipe, which was, you know, the bottle, what they do, right? 23. Never touched it again in that way. I'd done it on the foil. So I thought the best way for me to do this is on the foil. It's more easier. Those that know means it's longer to smoke. With the crack pipe, one lick, gone. Right, and the next one, gone. On this, you can put £20 on, you can have 10, 15, 20 minutes doing it. So I decided to more do it that way because of that experience. I felt it. And then I tried it again. Like I tried, you know, say six months later, someone said, I have a pipe. And then as, as I went to do it, I remember the same feeling, the sensation. So something reacted in me, which was good, really, because then I didn't touch... Mm. Crack, you know what I mean? I'd smoke, so it done me a favour, mm -hmm. but not with my own will. My own will was I want to fucking smoke it, but I just couldn't do it that way no more. 